Employed by the South Carolina Law Enforcement Division, more commonly referred to as SLED. How long have you been employed with SLED? I've been employed with SLED in the DNA Casework Department since February of 2005. A little over 14. And you're done with the DNA department? Yes, sir. Would you describe to the jury your background in education in DNA and serology? I have a bachelor's of science degree from Clemson University. I completed a training program at SLED where I learned evidence handling serology or the identification of body fluids. I learned uh, DNA analysis, extraction, quantitation, and amplification of DNA and DNA interpretation and statistics as it relates to DNA analysis. And have you ever been qualified as an expert in South Carolina in the field of DNA examination and interpretation? Yes, sir. Approximately how many times? Approximately 35. Do you want to state what Officer Stephanie Stanley is an expert in the field of DNA examination? No objection. No objection. Ms. Stanley is qualified to give testimony regarding DNA analysis in that field. Yes, sir. In general terms, would you explain to the jury what DNA is and what serology is? Um, let me start with serology, because serology is the identification of body fluids. Typically, the body fluids that we're talking about are blood, semen, and saliva for their use in DNA testing. So once we identify something as potential blood, semen, or saliva, we attempt to develop a DNA profile from that item. DNA is a chemical that's found in all of our cells, with the exception of your red blood cells. And half of your DNA comes from your mom, and half your DNA comes from your dad. Most of our DNA among humans is the same. But in forensics, we're interested in a very small portion of our DNA that's different, which allows us to tell individuals apart from one another. In our lab, we looked at 15 locations on the DNA, and the information from all those locations combined gives us what is known as a DNA profile. And no two people will have the same DNA profile, with the exception of identical twins. Okay, I can just like Yes, ma'am. Your Honor, for the record, the defense has stipulated to the chain of custody as far as material coming to Ms. Stanley for analysis. That's correct. We put that on the record earlier from it being transported from Alabama over to Columbia. And additionally, some of the analysis that Ms. Stanley would have done actually went to the identification of the children, which was also stipulated to be by the which we went over Friday afternoon late. That's correct. Okay. Y'all understand they've agreed to chain the hand-to-hand -hand bringing of the samples to her office and then also to the identification back to the lady who testified last. All that was agreed to as it got passed along, chain by chain linked, consistently and correctly. They just agreed that. So that's what that all that meant. So Stanley, you analyzed numerous items on this case, isn't that correct? Yes, sir. Today, I want to talk to you specifically about six items. This is a photograph, stage 112. It is a five gallon blue Walmart bucket. That item was sent to SLED for processing and was item 64, I believe, of SLED. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Now, there was a swab taken from the handle of the bucket, which would be known as 64.1. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Would you describe to the jury what, if any, analysis that you did on the swab taken from the handle of the bucket? And what you DNA analysis was performed on item 64.1, which were the swabs taken from the handle of the bucket, and the partial DNA profile developed from that item matches the DNA profile of Mira Jones, and the probability of randomly selecting an unrelated individual having a DNA profile matching this partial DNA profile on this item is one in approximately 83,000. Page 123 is a photograph of what's been described as biological matter that was taken from the trunk area of the Cadillac Escalade by Stacey Jones. That would be sled number 98. 
Yes, sir. Would you describe to the jury what, if any, analysis was performed on that and what results, if any, you found? DNA analysis was performed on this item, and the partial DNA profile developed from item 98, the piece of biological material, matches the DNA profile of Elias Jones. The probability of randomly selecting an unrelated individual having a DNA profile matching this partial DNA profile is approximately 1 in 44 billion. 1 in 44 billion. States number 78 <clears throat> is described as a swab collected from the center console of the Cadillac Escalade by Stacy Jones. That is, I believe, 102 for slab. Yes, sir. Would you describe what examination you did and what results you found? I first checked the item to see if there was any chance that the item had blood on it, and presumptive testing for blood was positive. I then performed <laughs> DNA analysis. Let me stop you for just a second. When you say you tested presumptive for blood, can you explain to the jury what that is and what it means? Yes, sir. Um, this item is came in to me as a form of swabs. I would have taken a snippet of that item and performed a chemical test that reacts positive if blood could be present. I performed DNA analysis on this item, and the DNA profile developed from item 102 um, matches the DNA profile of Natan Jones. The probability of randomly selecting an unrelated individual having a DNA profile matching this item is approximately 1 in 370 quadrillion. Quadrillion. The numbers go trillion, trillion. Right, million, billion, trillion, quadrillion. Let me show you three photographs, 124, 126, and 128. Those are photographs of a, this is a bag containing a white pillow that was connect, collected by Stacy Jones. 126, the photograph of the pillow itself with writing on the photograph on the pillow. Do you recognize um, that being the handwriting of Verona Herrera? Yes, I do. Okay. Who is she? Verona Herrera is a forensic serologist um, in the DNA casework department. So for this item, she would have done something before it came to you? Correct. What did she do? Um, Verona would have looked at this item. Anything that's much larger than a swab or a cutting goes to our serology section, and they're going to look for biological material, those biological stains. And once they're identified, they would take a cutting. As you can see um, next to that 110.1, there's a hole. She would have taken a cutting from that area and forwarded that to me for analysis. Once you got item 110.1, which was a cutting from the pillow taking from the Escalade, what, if anything, did you do with it? I performed DNA testing on that item. And what, if anything, did you find? The partial DNA profile developed from item 110.1, which is the cutting from the pillow, matches the DNA profile of Gabriel Jones. The probability of randomly selecting an unrelated individual having a DNA profile matching this item is approximately 1 in 28 quadrillion. States 131 it is a photograph of a sunshade that was collected from the vehicle. I believe the sled item that would correspond to that is 89. Is that correct? Yes, sir, it is. And then 89.1 would have been what? 89.1 would have been swabs collected from that sunshade. And what, if any, analysis did you do on the swab that was collected? I performed DNA analysis on that item. And what were your results? The DNA profile developed from 89.1 matches the DNA profile of Abigail Jones. The probability of randomly selecting an unrelated individual having a DNA profile matching this item is approximately 1 in 34 quadrillion. I'm sorry, quintillion. Finally, let me show you what's been marked as states 
168. Let me get you a pair of gloves. They've been left out there. I had laid them up there as well. If you would uh, open the box. Yes, sir. And that's item, that's flight item 77, correct? Correct. And that's described as a with a broken buckle that was collected from the defendant's vehicle, correct? Yes, sir. Your Honor, if I could ask the witness to step down from the table. Sure. Sure. When we describe it as a broken belt buckle, as you describe to the jury what we're talking about? This portion right here, when it was submitted for analysis, was not intact. When it was submitted for analysis to the laboratory, this portion was not intact. Looking at the belt, there's gray numbering over both sides of the belt. Would you explain to the jury what the numbering represents? Yes, uh, forensic serologist Verona Herrera would have swabbed this item, and you can see where one portion starts and stops. This is 77.2.1, 77.2.2. A lot of times, items that could have been obligature, we will swab the inside portion separate from the outside portion because we're trying to identify probably two individuals at least. And then on the inside as well, the numbers are repeated? Yes, sir. So, Looking at your, you can have a seat. Thank you. And this is States 168 for the record. Can you describe to the jury what any analysis she performed, I believe, on seventy-seven point two point one is the middle swab from the belt? Yes, sir. I performed DNA analysis on that item. The DNA profile developed from 77.2.1 is a mixture of at least two individuals. A DNA mixture simply means that more than one person is contributing DNA to that item. The partial DNA profile of the major contributor, or who's contributing the most to that item, uh, matches the DNA profile of Gabriel Jones. The probability of randomly selecting an unrelated individual having a DNA profile matching the major contributor to this item is approximately one in 570,000. Thank you, Ms. Stanley. Please answer any questions. No questions. Thank you very much, Ms. Stanley. Thank you. The state calls Karen Lenhardt. Good morning. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Where are you employed? I'm employed at Saxagotha Elementary. Tell us about uh, your job there. I am the school nurse at the school. Um, I have been a pediatric nurse for 35 years, and I have been employed by Saxagoth Elementary for 20 years. And what type of license do you hold? Um, I'm a registered nurse. And how long have you worked at Saxagoth as a school nurse? 20 years. Now, were you working at Saxagoth Elementary back in 2014? 
Yes. At that school, how do you maintain information which documents the health of individual students? At that time, we would have um, a health card that we would send home with each child at the beginning of the year, and the parents would fill it out, and then they would send it back to us. So the health card goes home with the child, but it's the parent's responsibility to fill it out? That's correct. And the parent normally fills it out on their own? That's correct. And then it's returned to you? Yes. Are these records maintained in the ordinary course of business there at Sac South Elementary? Yes, they are. Let me show you some documents and ask you whether or not you recognize them. These have been pre marked as States Exhibits 169, 170, and 171. I do recognize them. Mm -hmm. These are my health cards. And can you tell us what these items are? These are the health cards that we sent out that year that returned to my health room to us. Okay. Mm -hmm. And specifically, uh, can you tell us whether these are the health cards of Mira Jones, Elias Jones, and Natan Jones? They are. And does it bear a signature on them? It does. Is that the signature of the parent? Yes. And who is the parent who signed these forms? Timothy Jones. Uh, Your Honor, at this time, this would be States Exhibits 169, 170, and 171 as evidence. Any objection? No objection. So 169, 170, 171 are in. I'm going to start here by asking you about the uh, health card for Mira. And specifically uh, on this health card, uh, does it state uh, the name of the parent? It does. And what is that name? Tim Jones. Is there any information provided for the mother? No. And then as we go through the card, tell us what we're looking at uh, in terms of the school year. What date was this submitted? Submitted on 9-12-2013. Now, the back of the form, what are you asking for specifically as to each child? We're asking for if there's any um, health problems that they might have. Those, those listed on the left side are common ones that we might see in school children. Um, and then we ask for any other information about physicians um, or if there's any things that are um, keep them from uh, participating in um, school activities. All right. So specifically, you're asking about things like anemia, uh, epilepsy, uh, diabetes, uh, anything of that nature. That's correct. And what, if any, comments did the parent make in this case? Um, he wrote down that the child is in good health. All right. And then do you go on and ask whether or not the child may have any impairment in function that would limit his or her participation in physical activity? Yes. And what was the parent's response as to Mira? No. All right. Going to move now to State's Exhibit uh, 170 regarding Elias. And were there any indication of health issues regarding the Eli Jones? No. And what comment, if any, did the parent make? He wrote, the child is in good health. All right. Was he taking any medications? No. And specifically as to whether he had any impairments that would limit his or her participation in physical activity? The answer is no. And then 171, regarding Natan. Was there any indication that Natan had any pre-existing medical conditions? No. What if any comments did Timothy Jones Jr. make regarding Natan's health? Said the child was in good health. Was Natan taking any medications? None. And then finally, we question: does Natan have any impairment in function that would limit his or her participation in physical activity? What was his response? No. Thank 
with you nothing further at this time. Thank you. Ms. Leonard, the children to be in school would have been up to date on their vaccinations, correct? Correct. They wouldn't be allowed in if they weren't. Correct. Mm -hmm. And I believe you were Mira's nurse for each of the years that she was there, correct? Correct. And it looks like you saw her seven times over the years. For every I'd, I'd have to look at my notes to for to for that exact number, but I did see her Her's in the health room. Ache, scratched an eye in the classroom. Um, also about some head lice, correct? That I do remember, correct. Mm -hmm. And she had head lice, and mm -hmm. you had some interaction with Tim about that, correct? I did. And then his idea to get rid of the head lice was to use kerosene. He did mention that, yes. You told him no. That would not be safe, correct. Not the way you do it, and you said a hair dryer. I, that was one of the things that we suggest sometimes to the parents to dry their hair with a hair dryer to um, dehydrate the eggs of the lice. Mm -hmm. And his thing was, I'll, I'll use a heat gun. He did say that. And you were like, absolutely not, that that is not safe. That is correct. That's what I said. And it looks like um, you saw Elias a number of times for ear infection, eye infection, rash, um, some playground injuries. I, like I said, I'd have to look at my notes to be exact, but yes, I did see him in the health room. It's not unusual for kids to come in, especially that age, to see you every so often for whatever is ailing them. That's correct. Mm -hmm. And it looks like you saw Natan about 11 times for dry skin, stomach ache, um, temperature, some itching. I think he had an ear problem at one point in time. Yeah. I think I recall that, yes. And then only, um, and you were familiar that once with Natan, DSS was called for some bruising, correct? That's correct. And that was the only time with any of the kids anything of earth that DSS was called. That's correct, that I, that I recall. Mm -hmm. And you only dealt with him, you never got I'll a... Let, let me, I, can I go back to that question? No, actually there was another time that um, a, a, a call was made. Okay. And who was that on? Mar Mira. On Mira? Mm-hmm. And you're aware that DSS has no records of those calls? I have record in, in my health room that I did make a call. Do you have your notes? Or do you have your, uh, from the health room? They're in my car. I'd like to see those, Judge. I don't have those. Sure. All right. We'll stand in for a couple minutes. Um, don't step in the jury room. Have you back in here? Let her run your own car. Okay. All right. So, nope. Uh, uh, you can car safe and sound. Can't talk to me about your testimony when you get back. Okay. okay. All right. You want to go forward? Yes, sir. All right. Um, subject sidebar without objection. 104 through 108 is in. And that right there on kind of the jawline is the photo or with the bruise on the neck? Yes, sir. That is just a photo, I guess. Um, yes. And that shows some bruising, I guess, a little bit on the left arm and maybe towards the top of the right. That's correct. Similar in Defense 107. That's correct. And lastly, I think Defense 108 shows it looks like a bruise right about here on the left. On his left arm. That's okay, correct. That's all the questions I have, Your Honor. All right. You may step down.
Okay, that's what I was thinking too. This is when we were going to lunch. We got an earlier break on that. All right, I got to put some on the record before the next witness. I thought this was when we were taking our break, but we got it early, so y'all get another 10 minutes. So, step in the jury room, have you back there in a moment.